Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy (laughs) awesome and we're live i'm alive kim thank you for joining me hello thank you pleasure so kim meyer branding expert Uh, we had a great chat on the phone must have been a few weeks ago now although the time's been time's been flying since uh since the lockdown stuff um how how have you been finding it all well, it's 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 been uh, it's been strange, hasn't it? I mean, I think we're all sort of um, you know reeling from it in in lots of ways. It's uh, it's and and also of course the you know we don't like the unknown, and this conjures up a lot of unknowns, you know. Yeah, so well, like, I think you've got to be uh, you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable, you know. Yeah, like, there's yeah. so much stuff that's gone on now, and you know, I speak to people, and you know, some are. You know, there's a lot of people that have got quite anxious and you know like a lot of people are fearful of kind of coming into cities or going out of the house or or change you know all of this change oh, yeah. is happening and and yeah you're right people people are unsettled by it but i think i think you've just got to try try and learn it's easier said than done just to be comfortable with it now yeah i think that's right it's really interesting too is that so many people um are saying you know can't wait to go back to normal <laughs> you know you just think like <laughs> who wants to go back you know <laughs> what's the, let's, what's let's, the let's go forward yeah i mean we're never going back now you know it's, no. it's changed forever i mean no, that's right the world jobs hiring working patterns um i did actually did a poll on linkedin last week just just to see and i asked you know who wants to go and work in the office full time who wants to go and stay at home full time and who wants a combination and the i mean i think it was like 80 odd percent wanted it maybe even more maybe 85 percent was a yeah. combination plus office and most were combination so the office is still like central to people's thoughts and the, they get social interaction but no yeah. one almost no one wanted to go back five days a week which i, f- I found really interesting yeah, I think that's right. Actually, here where I live, you know, I'm, I'm down in Sussex. Um, a friend of mine's an estate agent. And he was saying lots of interest in people moving out of London, you know, right. looking for the country life. They don't have to commute every day, you know, being yeah. in the office two days a week or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So it's definitely made a change. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of, speaking to an estate agent the other day, and there's a lot of vacant properties to let in central London, like zone yeah. one, zone two. As you're right, like people have, they've either left the country to to go home uh for lockdown wherever that might be because i think it's 55 percent of people that live in london aren't from the uk so right fair enough Uh, and then yeah people um people have been moving out to or trying to move out to the countryside uh if if the countryside want them (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) so what's your what's your background with a pitchfork yeah exactly right (laughs) So, so what if you, yeah, can you tell everyone a little bit about your background and be, be a great place to, to start? Yeah, so, so I've been involved in creating uh, branded experiences, um, well, for 30 years, you know, I mean, um, I came up through the publishing industry and as a marketing director and, uh, and then uh, literally went into the sort of uh, deep end of the trade show business, used to run a big um, IT or tech show called Comdex. Uh, it was one of the largest shows in the world. Um, just to give you an idea, you know, 1.2 million square feet of floor space, you know, 6,500 exhibitors, 225,000 attendees just in Las Vegas for a week. Crazy. Uh, it was also replicated um, in 20 countries around the world under license. So it was ginormous um, trade show. And I, went, I, I, I was there for a few years and then um, moved into the agency world uh, working for an agency called George B. Johnson for a dozen years as the MD of uh, the business in Europe uh, here out of London. And then um, I joined uh, another big agency in the events world called Freeman and then MCI. And then 
about a year ago, um, a few colleagues uh, and I formed our own sort of little collaboration uh, called Experience Designed. And essentially um, what we do is help creative organizations, whether it's a client, you know, a vendor client, a, a business a client, or whether it's an agency, um, to use new kinds of planning and design tools uh, to create better experiences um, for people. And, um, and, and particularly in this day and age when experience um, is becoming more important, um, but it's also becoming multi-platform in the sense that it's just not live experience, it's online experience, it's packaging, it's customer service. You know, every touch point of a brand now um, is the brand's identity. Um, it, it becomes a little more complex and needs to be, and a different approach is really required. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm involved in. Brilliant. Has it, has it changed or has the focus changed much since the pandemic? Obviously, there's well, no live. If anything, yeah, if anything, our, our, our approach has been endorsed. I mean, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, we were saying all along that, uh, look, you know, when you, you know, the whole movement around live events and experiences um, in corporate brands, um, has been growing dramatically in the last couple of years and you know up to like 20 35 30 percent of some corporations budgets are being spent on live experiences you know okay. uh, conferences and trade shows and in-store activations and sponsorships of, of events and those sort of things so you know it's it's uh, it's become important and I think brands have really recognized the value of not just broadcasting at audiences but actually engaging them uh, in more meaningful ways. And so it's become, um, you know, big business. I think the yeah. thing is that, you know, we all have a tendency to not want to or or a difficulty in embracing change, you know. So so a lot of the events industry was kind of in denial that digital and, and, and virtual events and online experiences actually played a role. And they only really tiptoed around it a little bit. Um, and I think this is kind of, uh, you know, the cl my clients used to say to me, you know, yeah, all that stuff sounds really fascinating, but we can't afford it. And anyway, if if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, the great thing about the coronavirus uh, episode is that it's broken. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. so now we kind of have yeah. to fix it, right? Do you think? Do you think it will ever go back to like a big live? You know, one point two million square foot of of space. I mean, will, will we ever get back to that? Do you think? Do you know? I'm not a I'm not a um, pandemic expert, so I don't know. You know. Um, you know what the you know what the future will hold in terms of the safety of people in large numbers getting together, but I know I know that I I believe that you know we will begin to understand that better integration between live and online experience needs to happen, and not just because um, of coronavirus and safety concerns, but because um, online engagement um, sometimes is more effective and more powerful, has greater reach, and is more sustainable. Um, than live multinational uh, congresses and and and, and trade shows. Yeah. So I think yeah. we're, we're, we're gonna we're definitely gonna see them work more closely together. I think it's interesting. I think I mean I guess the point is, I mean I've spoken to spoken to people that often go to these events um, and they're really enjoying it online. I mean I was speaking to a guy the other day and he's like you know I go to like a bunch of events um, in his industry and they're always in different countries and he got a bit tired of it and. And now he's been to them and they've been online and he said, look, you know, it's been really great. I can do it from my home and the experience is better. And, and, and he was thinking, do I really want to go back to these? Not for the safety aspect of, of COVID, but just he seems to be getting more value and, and saving time doing it online. I mean, for example, you know, um, obviously yeah, advertising week and, and they did a, they did a JPAC advertising week, like maybe, four or five weeks ago and yeah. uh, i mean pre-pandemic obviously i wouldn't be flying over to japan um but i managed to attend virtually it was great yeah. and i saw the i saw each session um because it was recorded and after i just it just feel, feels like the experience is is great and it gets to such a wider audience yeah i think that i think that's right I and mean, the reach is 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 you know, tremendous. I mean, a, a kind of really interesting thing here is that this isn't the first, um, our first adventure into um, the disaster in the live events industry. If you remember back in sort of <clears throat> 2008, 2009, uh, when we had the big recession and the financial crisis, you know, um, events were being canceled left and right. And 
lots of corporations were taking their events online into virtual experiences. You know, um, so even Comdex, the big trade show I used to work for, went virtual. It was Comdex virtual. Um, right. It was clunky and it was avatar based, and it was right. you know, you wouldn't do it now. But but it, but yeah. it, but it was it was a big move to say you know the technology's there. It may not be ready yet, um, and but that'll that'll change. You know that'll continue yeah. to evolve. Um, Cisco, for example, you know the big tech company. Um, they took their global sales meeting virtual back in 2009. Um, you know, they used to fly 20,000 people into Las Vegas in the middle of the summer. And then uh, then they'd have guys riding bicycles on stage to show how little power their servers required uh, being <laughs> environmentalists. And they realized, wait a minute, this is a pretty mixed message, you know. Yeah. Um, and so the, the, the lesson in all of that was the technology wasn't quite up to speed, but the other part of it was that... Um, live experiences do have a place in our culture and that's probably not going to change so even in the case of the cisco uh, experience you know when we interviewed all the sales people who didn't go to las vegas but watched it virtually participated virtually um we said uh, what did you think and they said yeah it was really great um and you know really cutting edge but it was really hard to drink beer through a screen you know that's the really difficult part and i think that human aspect means that people, yes, are going to want to get together again, whether it's just a bunch of people who all have red hair, like Red Hair Day in, in the Netherlands, or people who all ride Brompton bicycles. Um, you know, we are going to want to get together as, as, as people. Um, does that mean that getting together live is the best way to communicate information, to learn something, to network? Not necessarily. And that's where we need to look at the mix of both live and online. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, for me, you can't beat face to face. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, to, to like to make friends with people, you've got to spend time with them. And, and you know, in companies, you, you might have a really tough day of strategizing and then you grab a dinner after, you yeah. know, or, exactly. or, or you, it just doesn't beat like, you know, like you meet someone over over a meal, you have a beer and you just like connect. You know, it's just online is great and, and the video is great. But for me, it just doesn't. It's just not quite the same. Um, yeah. I you know, I think that's right. I mean, I think, I think, you know, but will we go back to normal? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I think the, the edges of the normal were, were getting a little, um, a little tattered anyway. I mean, I think even some of the very large events were starting to question, does this make sense? I mean, <clears throat> it used to be that uh, large scale events were all about the numbers. And you know, I could tell you for years, my clients were always about how many people came, you know, and how many people they got trapped in the keynote room and sold to. You know, that thing. And I think they recognize today that there are actually better ways to communicate at people um, yeah. in much larger numbers, um, more cost effectively, more sustainably using uh, digital approaches. Um, so the, 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 the sort of focus now has, to your point, become more human centric. It now really is about engaging with the audience um, yeah. getting to know your audience much better, um, developing more personalized experience, um, you know, creating opportunities for that uh, live audience to collaborate uh, with one another rather than just calling networking the drinking reception, you know, how do you get yes. people to actually work together? So I think, yeah. you know, that that's, um, that's going to change a lot of things as we move forward. Yeah. So you still think, and, and I do, that the human human connections are still super important and should form part of whatever strategy brands are you know are planning yeah i think they are but you know the other thing though is that um we are a new generation of people i mean i'm, I'm an old guy but you know my my son's in his mid mid 20s and um you know he just uh, you know he's come to a couple of uh, large scale events with me and just doesn't get it at all you know it's kind of like what are all yeah. these people doing um, you know, wasting this number of days wandering around aimlessly, going to content sessions that aren't that great. Um, yeah. You know, in 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 being presented with PowerPoint in darkened conference rooms. You know, it's not necessarily conducive to to a great experience. So I think young people really now do view the world uh, through a digital and live lens, and the two of them get combined. You think I call it sort of on live experience you think when you're driving with sat nav you know you're being directed by an app but you're essentially physically driving i think more and more of our lives are happening in that way um yeah. i mean 
you know, it's, it's, it, you know, we can block out ads, you know, we don't have to sit through boring content, even if we're physically there, you know, we have our phone, we have our uh, other devices that we can distract ourselves with our attention spans. Well, maybe, maybe they haven't shrunk. Uh, demand for the attention span uh, has certainly grown. You know, there's so much clutter out there, people trying to get, you know, your attention um, all the time uh, with, with all the social media that we're involved in, the streaming that we're involved with, uh, you know, just all of that stuff. That sometimes the human experience is a great way of cutting through that noise and cutting through that clutter and can be meaningful, but only if it's being designed around the needs of the audience and not the needs of the broadcaster, you know, or the, or the event owner. And I think that's an important uh, change that we're going to have to see. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, for me, I really enjoy watching and listening to something like this, you know, a podcast, a video cast, a live stream. I find I find it really engaging, and 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 a lot of people a lot of people are doing these things, and you know the 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 quality of the content has is, is really gone gone high now. Like the yeah. bar's been risen. The, the live shows that I always found over the years quite hit and miss. Um, you know whether the speaker's good. Also, a lot of people go to these events for networking opportunities, which aren't really like there in reality. Like you know, you you're watching a someone speak and then so you can't really speak to the people around you you might meet people when you were when you're when you're at the drinks or whatever afterwards but again kind of you know not as many as, as one would hope you know yeah. um, plus it takes a lot of time and so I think you're right you know younger people and I think just not, not necessarily age but just people generally are thinking more about how they spend their time and how they consume content and learning um, and I think for me, the human aspect comes from like a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, like going to yeah. meet my my customer or whoever it might be, like face to face and share share an experience with them, you know, whether it's a dinner or a walk. I mean, I'm actually doing a lot of walk and talks in the city right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's cool. Like you grab a coffee, you go for a walk, and you have that human connection, and yeah. then. They can watch me on the video or they can listen to a podcast or I can do the same if they're on, you know. So I'm, I'm really, it's just fascinating how quickly this has all moved on. Yeah, it, it is. It is really interesting. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's like overnight, all of a sudden, everyone is a virtual event expert. It's like the most incredible thing I've ever seen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, but the tech's there, right? Like, um, I mean, this, so this, this, this technology we're using to do this, I mean, it's, it's right. great. You know, you have a good internet connection, and you're able to. You know, this format, this format's a more demanding format in lots of ways. You know, uh, you know, live event. You're, you're right. You're kind of a trapped, um, you know, audience. You're there. You made the commitment to be there. Uh, the content may not be so great, but you know, you're you don't want to be rude. Um, you know, you hang around, and we also have this. You know, you want to get your money's worth if you paid for it, right? So even though day one wasn't that great, you go to day two. Um, because you're there and you paid for the hotel and the whole sort of thing. And I think there's a lot of that. With this platform, you know, you could just click off. That's true. Very true. Come back later if you want. You know, I mean, again, and I think that's the other interesting thing about the online world of experiences is that it breaks down the barriers of time and place. It yeah. doesn't have to be in one location uh, geographically, and it doesn't have to happen at any single moment. It can happen over a series of days. It can happen over, you know, it could be just the mornings. It can, you know, you can do lots of different things um, that are still really convenient, uh, making sure that you're getting the, the, you know, the most value for, for the experience. And the other thing is, it's also raised, the, and I think it will continue to raise the, the standard and the quality of content. You know, I've been to, I can tell you, hundreds, if not thousands of events. And um, with all good intentions on the part of the organizers, the content is always not that great. And it's not always that great. Right. Um, now, because there are executives from the company who are speaking and they're they're really just trying to sell you and uh, where they're very technical people who are not really good presenters, uh, who have PowerPoint presentations, which are filled with way too much content and it's really hard to interpret. And, you know, so, you know, this format is a format where the content needs to be rich. It needs to uh, be curated so that, you know, I hear you say something. I know that I can find more information about that uh, with a click. Um, you know, there's lots of that kind of thing that's going to be going on, and I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's great. Yeah. Also, I like, I like. I mean, this is conversational style, and 
and I enjoy the conversational style. You know, I think people like to listen to conversations and, and you're right, so many of the presentations in conferences are set, set like there, there's, a, there's a sales slant to it, you know, whether it's the sponsor's VP of whatever talking um, and you can always just smell the sales a little bit. Whereas, whereas with something like this, it's, it's, it's less formal, right. it's a little bit more relaxed, but to your point, someone can watch for 30 seconds and, and none of popped up on the, on the side of their YouTube and they've clicked onto that instead. And they've yeah. gone down this rabbit hole of, so, um, so you really have to work hard, I think, to create great content, but also accept that they're not, people aren't necessarily going to watch the whole thing. That's right. Yeah. And then, um, but that's, that's the beauty of it too, is because, you yeah. know, you've changed up the sort of cost structure here too. And that is, you know, you're not, you know, you, for for virtual events, you're not dealing with catering and venues and transport and, you know, the logistics and all of those costs. You know, it seems to me that, you know, you should be paying more attention to the experience, the content, the engagement, the ability to allow your audience to participate, even if it's electronically, um, I think is really, really important. And sometimes that gets lost. I can tell you lots of event planners that I've worked with over the years, you know, um, you know, the, their boss says we want to do an event and right away it's how many people, you know, <laughs> there's the venue, are we having a, are we having a reception? You know, they go right down this logistics path and I understand that and those things are important. So I'm not criticizing them, but I'm saying, you know, I like this. I'd, I'd rather hear them say, why are we doing the event? What's the purpose? What do we hope to achieve? Who's the audience that we need to engage with and who are they? And what do we yeah. really know about them other than their job title? Um, yeah. you know, are they risk takers? Are they, you know, are they more, you know, safety conscious? Are they, do they want to, um, innovate or do they want to just be more productive? You know, what kinds of people are they and making sure that we're developing content and experiences, which, you know, suit the needs of our audiences in order to achieve our objective. And those discussions are important in live events and often don't happen to the extent they should, but they are critical in online events because yeah. you literally can check out. Yes. And as we know, brand is super important, right? I mean, building your brand <clears throat> online or offline is, is, is I mean, in my opinion anyway, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert, but super critical. It's, um, it's, it's really critical. Yeah. We were just talking about this the other day. We were, I was, I was oh, actually right. doing a virtual event and, uh, and, you know, I was speaking on a virtual event and we were talking about, uh, our perceptions of brands, how we create in our mind, you know, what a brand is about and all the touch points that we use. And I was using the example of Apple and and saying how many people use Apple products and <clears throat> everyone's saying, well, we all do at some level, you know? Um, uh, so I said, okay, we're going to an Apple event. What's the venue like? And everyone was saying, well, it's glass and steel and white and clean and, you know, it's somewhere cool. Uh, the young crowd, old crowd, young crowd, jeans or suits, jeans, chicken or sushi, sushi. And then one guy said, you know, don't you just love when you open that iPhone box, that sort of vacuum that happens, and then there's the phone. You know, that, that all those little things um, create the sort of identity and the cohesion uh, of those experiences, you know, create create the identity of the brand. Yeah, so like the sensory marketing, so like the touch, the smell, like yeah. the whole... Because, you know, with, with Apple, it's great. They've done a great thing. I mean, you'd, you'd go and buy, there's rumors they're building a, a, a car to rival Tesla. And, yeah. and you'd, you'd probably buy it, yeah. you know, like it's a cool yeah. brand. Would you buy a car from Nokia? Mm, probably sure. Not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. And, and it's, it's interesting. It's, it's it, even in spite of brands' best efforts in some ways, because, you know, take a brand like IBM. I think they've done a lot to sort of modernize the IBM brand. Um, no question about that, and to you know to really sort of uh, modernize the sort of big blue uh, concept. But even still, when you ask people we're going to an IBM event, they say it's a hotel or a congress center. There's old, you know more old people than young. They're in suits, not jeans, and you're eating chicken. So you know they, these brands they imprint on us, you know, uh, our, our image of who they are, and that's very tough to to change. Um, unless you're really, really consistent with every touch point in, your, in the experience. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't you, I'm really impressed with Microsoft the last like five, 10 years, because they're an old company. You know, they've been going for a long time. Yeah. They've, uh, for me anyway, it just feels like they've really, they've upped the game and they've been able to, 
to keep pace with, with some of these these newer tech firms and i think they've done great you know they've yeah, well, they have some visionary leadership now you know that amazing. I think, yeah yeah and then they they obviously bought linkedin and so i think that's a good that's a cool story on yeah. the on the so on the on the online content um because i think um whether we go back to live events or not it's 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 a huge part now of you know of 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 a brand of, of a brand advertising strategy um are you seeing people do it well or are you still are you seeing people kind of falling over the line of a bit of a bit of bit of selling and like similar to the like they just stepped off stage and turned the camera on and they well i you know i think the i think the um and again this is just my sort of opinion but i think this whole concept of pivoting is is is, is kind of an awkward uh concept i, I think the idea is we should have been transforming uh, the live experience uh, approach to incorporate uh, online experiences all along, um, yeah. and and it really isn't a matter of I can't do that anymore. Let's do that and expect it to be terrific. I think the great thing though is that um, I think everybody is willing to participate with less than great right now. I think there's a fair amount of forgiveness on the part of audiences that you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, bandwidth isn't always great everywhere. And, you know, people are really just getting a hang of these tools, but that won't last very long. You know, it, you know, people will distance themselves. And I think, you know, there are, you hear more and more, I'm, I'm reading articles about how, um, you know, this is great business for the, for the broadcast industry because all those um, production people who understand how to create a, a content broadcast are, are very useful in online, you know, uh, kinds of development so that they, you know, they know how to build storylines and narratives and, you know, create that peak and, you know, use information in bite-sized pieces and, you know, make sure that they're, you know, putting breaks in between um, key ideas and doing all those kinds of things that we traditionally haven't done in the live experience, um, yeah. but make for way better content uh, and yeah. way better content absorption. So I think it's more and more, yeah. you know, improvement in all of that. You know, I always tell this story that, you know, one time when I was, um, way back when I worked in publishing, I, I went to this event in New York. Uh, it was actually called the Siebold Seminars. It was about, about online publishing. And it was when online publishing was just emerging. And I went there and uh, the chairman of the company I worked for was there, a publishing company, and he was there. And we, we were print publishers of magazines and news, newspapers. And he, uh, he, he was speaking. Anyway, he got up on stage and he said, you know, a lot of my colleagues came up to me today and said, don't worry. Um, this online publishing thing will never take off. Um, you know, who wants to read in, in a, on a small, you know, computer screen? And he said, but it didn't make me feel very good because I can remember when television emerged, um, everybody in radio said, don't worry, it'll never take off. Who wants to watch a man reading into a microphone? And I think the same is true here. When yeah. we start thinking about virtual events and, um, and digital experiences, um, you know, we don't know what's to come. You know, the possibilities are tremendous. Um, and, you know, yeah, while radio still exists and print publications still exist, you know, there's been a transformation of the industry and our behavior around television, and there will be around digital as well. Yeah, I, you're right. You're right. I mean, you know, there's been an, there's been an uptick in, in live shows as well, like live streams, which is quite interesting. Yeah, um, esports, you know, incredible e growth, incredible. Oh. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, something non-tech like the bicycle. I mean, bicycle shops stayed open during lockdown, and they've had a renaissance. Oh yeah, no question. Huge renaissance. So, so yeah, you you never quite know. Um, but I think what's interesting is that, I mean, this is this is here to stay. Um, you know, content, the importance of brands to get content right, to to up the game. I mean, you're right. People are, are quite forgiving, but you know, if your internet connection is dodgy. It's not going to wash for very long, right? So the, the no, UK right. certainly need to upgrade internet in the uh, in the countryside. Um, but what's also interesting is, da is data and, and data um, consumer insights. I mean that that's been around for for a long time. But I think it's so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but more and more informing brands um, about what their customers are thinking and feeling and and so forth. Yeah, that's kind of a, that's kind of an interesting co concept. One, one, for example, you know, some some of my clients are saying, "Wow, you can actually gather much more data um, from digital experiences than you can from live experiences." You know, where you're relying on um, the audience to participate 
uh, in the in the polling or in the in the data collection or in the data gathering. You know, so this is something where you know you can really um, it, it's it's a much more effective tool. But there's also a change there too, and I think you use the words interchangeably, but I don't think they're the same word. There's a difference between data and insights, and and, and I think that's really going to be important as we move forward. You know, I think the traditional business strategy model has always been about analyzing the present and past and then making predictions about the future uh, based on those assumptions. You know, so, well, it's been my experience in the last 20 years that if you don't have a margin of this amount by the first quarter, then you're going to be screwed the second quarter. The, you know, those are the kinds of calculations that we've seen traditionally how businesses are run, which, which is, has been, I guess, a safe way to do it. But it's also been an inhibiting, uh, inhibiting to innovation and inhibiting to change because you you really don't want it to be, you know, not no, you know you know you don't want to embrace the unfamiliar. You you know you want to make sure that you're sort of uh, as safe as you can be. And of course, transformation and innovation is inherently unfamiliar. If, we, if it was familiar, then it wouldn't be a breakthrough, would it? So, um, and I think in the new approach to to planning and to you know where we're taking more of a design approach, um, the issue is less about mapping data and much more about understanding insights and direction. Uh, what are people's intentions? What are their, you know, what kinds of behaviors are they exhibiting? So that we can start to find ways of predicting um, what the future might look like and that it might look different and that we can create solutions to sort of embrace the future rather than be modeled on the past. And that is a really fundamental an important thing in developing human-centered experiences in that we need to understand people for a yes. change rather than data. Yes. Um, that a very different approach. Absolutely. I'd also say, though, and, and a lot of people, whether it be entrepreneurs or, or people in larger businesses, uh, they get a bit scared to create create content. You know, it's like it's tough to go on a video and or on a podcast or film yourself doing some content. Yeah. And and so for me, like you can only really get the good quality insights if you have if you have the data, right? So if you go and do like loads of content, you know, after a year, you're gonna have loads of cool data to be able to like delve in, get the insights, so then refocus and double down on the bits that have done well, or you you'll understand, you know, yeah. who's consumed and and so forth. Yeah, no, that's really important. And I, I, again, I think, you know, it, it's, it, it's a classic actually in the events uh, industry in particular um, that, you know, they talk a lot about data, but they rely on it very little. <laughs> right. You know, right. But the, you know, the beauty of this, I mean, even with the podcast, I mean, this podcast I've been doing, uh, we moved to video during lockdown, but it's been about two years. And, and you start from small numbers and it grows nicely if you do it regularly and consistently right. and you up the game and stuff. But but you get so much rich data. You know, you, you find out, you know, where people are listening, what time they're listening, which ones are more popular than others, and and you know, suddenly I went from I went from my friends laughing at me that I did a podcast to them listening to me to then right. to them asking me how to do it themselves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to then, you know, to then lockdown happening and everyone wants to do a podcast. You know, and um, but my point is that. You know, now and just you just got to do stuff. You know, like don't be afraid to try, and um, and then once you do it and you do it regularly and you do it often, you just improve and you get better and you get better at it. And I think, you know, I think if you're running a company or you know you're you're, you're trying to build the brand of your business, it's so important to do these things. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, and again, and I think the enablers in terms of technology and also, um, you know, the capabilities of, of a generate half the world's population is under 34. I mean, we, you know, most people don't remember when, you know, phones had wires attached to them. Do you know, so I think, you know, we are in that uh, state now where um, there, there's more there's more ability to consume different kinds of formats and different kinds of content uh, and different kinds of experiences, even to the point where, you know, I just I, someone was telling me a story last week about how, you um, you know, people who are homebound, elderly or homebound, uh, receiving homebound care uh, are now, you know, having um, Zoom calls um, with their relative, you know, with the hospital, for example, um, where they're being monitored. And, you know, this is, this is all completely new, like whoever heard of having a Zoom call. Um, and it's a completely transformative experience for them uh, where they may not get to talk to anyone the entire week. Um, oh. So now Zoom has made it so much easier uh, to do. 
Um, VR, virtual reality, and being able to take people on trips, even though they're 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 bed, you know, they're bound to their bed, um, back to their home village in you know in Yugoslavia. I mean, you know, whatever it is, uh, the power to use technology to create experiences that transform transform human experience is it's just amazing. Oh, it's quite amazing. My my grandma, she's ninety eight, and she has been locked in her room in her old age home in Cape Town, and. Yeah. Um, been allowed out for two months she tried to escape with the zimmer frame but the uh they, they found her and brought her straight back <laughs> and uh um but but she's able they brought they bring in like they brought in a computer and uh, and we skyped and we saw her and she saw us and it's great. It great like the smile on her face and yeah. she wants to be locked in her room and certainly at that age i mean she's like i'm gonna i'm gonna die anyway i mean if i get covid you know so yeah you're right i mean it's it's just great that that she's able to talk to her family who aren't in south africa and stuff like that so so, so what a, so what an amazing opportunity we have really that covid made me woke up a sleeping giant um <laughs> you know that um we recognize now that you actually can create really high quality uh experiences um on different platforms than just live and you know and that's not to say that live's not important because i think it is as, you, as we both discussed but i but i think you know just imagine um, what can be created using the technology that's available to us now uh, to reach communities that aren't generally, you know, reached to, yes. you know, engage people in conversations that aren't usually engaged to um, communicate with people important information um, that they need, no matter where they are, in no matter what time zone, um, you know, the just the possibilities are are tremendous and, and exciting. I think it's a great and then the really the cool thing about video which i love is you know maybe 100 years ago or 50 years ago probably to, you had to be able to read to learn yeah. and now you just have to be able to listen or watch or know the language that someone's talking in or use google translate to translate it to your language and yeah so it's like it's it's it's, it's just enabled more and more people now to you know to educate themselves to learn which is a great 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 thing and for brands to be able to reach I mean, so many more people. And there's the silver lining on all of this is that, you know, um, this technology is not only about business conferences and, you know, conference calls and those kinds of things. It's a real enabler to do good in our world. You know, I mean, there's real possibilities that we can transform people's lives um, by creating better content and online experiences. Uh, and we're, the tools are becoming available to us. So what an exciting future. Oh, yeah. um, you know, where, where you can actually uh, do good in the world um, with this technology. Definitely. Well, what a beautiful place to end. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. And I'm looking forward to a live meeting with you uh, when uh, when this when this all opens up in the and the new I'll world. <laughs> we'll have to do we'll do we'll do comedians in cars or whatever that you know. Did you ever see that? Oh, the car carpool uh, the carpool thing. No, not car carpool car car karaoke. This is. Uh, it, it's uh what's his name uh Steinfe seinfeld yeah 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 he does uh, he does comedians in cars uh or, right okay yeah he drives uh, around with a, another comedian in a car let's do that talk. yeah yeah and videos yeah. it yeah we'll get, we'll, we'll get a nice tesla we'll we'll stream it live and Sounds excellent. done thank you so much have a great thank one you, thank you it's great thanks very much